this video, we're finally going to start talking about how to incorporate seasonality into our ARIMA model. So there's going to be a lot of moving parts throughout the video. So I want to go really, really slowly and kind of form a foundation for why we're doing this. Talk about some notation, um, talk about one of the simplest models, and then we're going to go even, even simpler and talk about just what happens when we reduce this to its bare bones. Okay. So first things first, the ARIMA model, if you remember from a previous video, was the autoregressive, which is saying that I want to predict the value of my time series today based on the value of the time series some periods in the past. Integrated, which means my time series has some sort of upwards or downwards trend, so I'm using uh, differencing to, in order to get rid of that to make it stationary. Moving average, which means that I'm using my error from a previous period to inform my uh, prediction of my time series today. And the new thing we see here is this S. So that S stands for seasonality, which means that on top of the whole ARIMA model, we also have seasonality, which if you remember from the seasonality video, what that means is a repeating pattern within a year uh, that happens over and over and over again over time. So that's all the pieces of it. Let's see how they factor into this chart here. Here's the setup for this model. You are a donut salesman and every, uh, every three months you record the number of donuts that you sold up until then uh, and you record them on this graph here. So this is my donut drawing. This is why I was a math major, not an art major, because that does not look like a donut. But we're going to continue here. Uh, we see that we start in 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. And there's four dots inside of every year, which means that every three months, right, because three times four would be 12 total months, you're recording the number of donuts sold. And we see a very, very clear seasonal pattern. We see this W type thing repeating every single year. So checkbox on the fact that there is seasonality in here. Okay, so how uh, do we know that we should use a Sarima model here? So seasonal Arima, sometimes Sarima model. We know that there's seasonality, so that's a check. Let me actually take a color here and put check. Check, we know there's seasonality. Uh, we know that there might be AR or MA component because the value of something at some period depends on the value of it maybe four periods ago, it seems like. So MA and AR are possible checks. What about the integrated? We see there's a clear upward trend over time that we're going to need to account for if we're going to correctly predict this. So all of these pieces are checks or potential checks. So we're clear to uh, start thinking about using the Sarima model. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is show you some notation, and it looks a little bit scary at first, but we're going to go from complicated to simple. So we're going to show you the notation, say what it all stands for, and then we're going to fill in some concrete numbers and talk about what happens to the model in all of those cases. Okay, so a Sarima model or a seasonal Arima model um, is given by seven whole parameters. Um, three of these you're already familiar with, the P, the D, and the Q. So the P corresponds to the order of the AR piece, the D to the order of the integrated piece, or how many times we take a difference to get it to be stationary, and the Q to the order of the MA piece. Now, the good thing about these seven parameters is that these next three are kind of just analogs of the first three, except in a seasonal context. So actually, before talking about the uppercase P, uppercase D, uppercase Q, it makes more sense to talk about lowercase m. Lowercase m is the seasonal factor, which is the number of periods within a year it takes for the seasonality to repeat. In our case, that's four, because we see that within a year, so 2014, 2015, for example, we see one, two, three, four periods. And then after that, from 2015 to 16, again, these four periods form the next batch of seasonality. So basically, if you were to batch up your seasonality, um, this is the number of terms within a year that your seasonality, uh, you get that seasonality at. So M is four for us in this case. Now going back to this uppercase P, uppercase D, uppercase Q, these are the analogs of the lowercase versions of these, except for the seasonal components. So, for example, I'm going to plug in some real numbers here, and they're all going to be 1 in this case, except for the M, which is 4, of course. What this model is saying, okay, ARIMA 111, and then uppercase letters being 111 as well. This is saying that I want to... Uh, integrate my model or take the first difference of my model, which is that D right here. And that corresponds to, I'm using the backshift operator, the B operator, same thing as L, if you remember our lag operator video. So that one corresponds to this piece right here, which is saying backshift my whole time series 
uh, I'm, I apologize, that corresponds to this piece here that says backshift my whole time series by one period. So y sub t to y sub t minus one. Now this one, the capital D, says backshift my entire time series also by four time periods. Why four? Because that's m. So m applies to this uppercase p, d, and q uh, in the same way that p, lowercase p, d, and q, there's like a secret one here. You can think about it that way because we're only doing that uh, for one period. Okay, so next this AR piece right here, this AR1 corresponds to what I was pointing at earlier, actually, which is I want to take into account the time period, the time series one period ago into my prediction. This one, which is the uppercase P, which is the order of the seasonal AR bit, is going to be given by this guy right here, which says I have a different coefficient, uppercase phi, which is this guy right here, and I want to backshift my time series four periods in the past because that's my m. You can probably see where I'm going with this. This is the ma piece for the standard component, which is given by that guy right here. And the final one is the ma piece for the seasonal component, which is given by this right here. The only difference is the difference uh, parameter, which is uppercase theta sub one. And I want to backshift it four periods in the past. Uh, by it, I mean the error. Okay, that was very very confusing so we are going to go even simpler and set a bunch of stuff to zero so that we can actually expand one of these models because if you think about expanding this entire mess you're going to get so many terms that it's going to be disgusting so we're not going to be expanding that entire model we're going to be setting a bunch of stuff to zero here's a very very simple case we're going to look at arima where lowercase p is one and then these other guys are zero uh, uppercase d and uppercase q are both one m is four and this guy is zero here, okay? So this is a little bit more manageable and it's gonna actually be more um, instructive in what we're actually doing behind the scenes because right now it's not very clear, okay? So what we're doing here is we're saying, I wanna predict my time series y sub t based on the time series one period ago. That's what this is saying right here and that's what's encoded by this backshift operator with a one exponent if you wanna think about it that way. Uh, I also want to take the difference from four periods ago. That's what this uppercase D being one says, and that is encoded by this one minus backshift four periods ago on my time series. The last thing I want to do is take a moving average, a seasonal moving average from four periods ago. That's what this guy is doing here. Okay, taking the moving average four periods ago for the error. Now this is a little bit easier to expand. I'm going to expand these two polynomials, basically multiply them together. So I get one minus phi sub one b minus b to the power of four plus, because negative negative makes a positive, phi sub one b to the power of five because this is b one, b four, combined they become b five. Applied to y sub t is equal to this error uh, multiplied by the one is just itself plus uppercase theta sub one this error backshifted four periods in the past is epsilon sub t minus four. All right, we're almost there. Now I'm gonna take this y sub t and hit it against all of these uh, terms here. So we get y sub t, we get minus. Uh, so actually I did a little bit of refactoring here as well because I did uh, this b to the power of four and that stayed here. I took all the other terms on this side of the equal sign which is why you're seeing phi sub one, y sub t minus one, minus phi sub one, y sub t minus five, plus these terms we already had. Now you're probably thinking I just made a huge mess, but it's about to get real clean if we define a new variable called z sub t, which is defined as y sub t minus y sub t minus four. Going back to the graph for a moment, this is saying I have a new time series, which is defined as the original time series at some point minus that time series four periods ago, which makes sense because that's gonna help me get this time series from an upward trend to more stationary. If I do that, then this, of course, by definition is z sub t. I can factor out the phi sub one and I'm left with y sub t minus one minus y sub t minus five, which again, using this identity is just z sub t minus one and these guys stay how they are. Now this makes a lot more sense and let's talk through that to end this video. This is saying that I want to make a prediction about my 
new time series z sub t, which again is the difference diversion of my original time series. To do that, I'm going to be saying that it's going to be some parameter phi sub 1 times that new time series one period in the past plus some other parameter times my error four periods in the past plus my error today. So we can see all the pieces at play here. And there was three pieces, right? The first piece was this integrated bit, this seasonal integrated bit of order one. But of course, that's four periods ago. How is that taken into account? That's taken into account by the fact that z sub t is that uh, difference from the current period to four periods ago. How do we factor in the AR1 component, which is not seasonal? Of course, that's right here because this is t minus one and this is just t. And lastly, how do we factor in the seasonal moving average component that was uh, has the seasonal factor of four on it? Of course, that's taken care of by the fact that we're also predicting based on the error four periods ago, okay? So hopefully, even though it's confusing um, at these stages, once you simplify it, you see where all of these factors eventually appear. And you can generalize this by substituting other things as not zero or setting certain things equal to zero. Okay, so please, if you have any questions, I encourage you to put them in the comments. I know that the more letters get added to this big acronym, the more confusing it gets. But I was hoping that this is a good first introduction into the SARIMA model in time series analysis. Okay, so until next time.